Voted the best Christmas markets in Europe by the European Best Destinations website for three consecutive years, Advent in Zagreb has now made CNN's list of the world's best Christmas markets. That's one here. Honestly, I never knew there is such a thing as getting honored as best Christmas market. My bad. I still don't quite get it how and even why they rank these Christmas markets. But hey, it's Christmas time and I have a feeling I'm in the right place for it. Can't think of a better way to kick off the holiday season than taking a stroll down the theme decorated streets with a local. Tatiana runs a travel agency here in Zagreb. But first and foremost, she was born here. So we are in the main square of Zagreb. So uh, this is the only square of Viceroy Jelacic that we call this square. When we mention the square where we're going to meet, this is everybody's main point, All under right. the clock or under the horse. Yeah. So we have the Viceroy Jelacic on his horse that he rode while he was in the military during Habsburg monarchy. And in 19th century, small settlements here in the downtown area started to develop. When he came back to Zagreb after finishing his military service, he came here and he saw that everything needs to be not redone, but done properly. And this is how Zagreb became as one, as we know today. So when we think of 1850, it's quite a young city, but from what it derived from, uh, it's a pretty old one because capital uh, was here since uh, 11th century. The Zagreb Christmas markets began quite unassuming, but it grew in just a few years. And each year, the festival got bigger and better. During early autumn, we also have cooked and baked corn. Then we have these chestnuts. And this is how uh, street food in Zagreb started decades and decades ago. Nowadays, of course, we have uh, different stalls with sausages, uh, Genknedl, and all these are remains from Austria-Hungarian uh, Empire, uh, Habsburg monarchy. Here in this continental region, we have a lot of Austrian food that we love. Uh, we have Hungarian food that we love, uh, like strudels, like um, different uh, goulash, uh, Wiener Schnitzel, which is very popular in Zagreb. Venison. Venison, a lot of venison, <laughs> yes, right. You know the food. And we have the trams, so let's not be hit by, yeah, by a tram. This is Croatian product, Zagreb product. New trams. Tram. Yeah. But what is it that makes Zagreb Christmas market unique? Unlike some Christmas markets that cluster around a single main square, the Zagreb Christmas festival takes place all over the city. In squares, down streets, across parks, in courtyards, even through tunnels. So under Gradec or today's upper town uh, that we call it, we have a tunnel. It's actually part of a huge network that we are suspecting that is under uh, the upper town. And it was uh, opened, it was built in 1943, mm -hmm. started to be built. And already by 1945, so we're talking about Second World War, it was in use because Zagreb was under heavy bombing and people were seeking uh, shelter in that tunnel. After the end of World War II, the tunnel got forgotten and pretty much abandoned until 1990s, when, once again, it served as shelter during the Croatian War of Independence. Right now, it houses a 40 meter long Polar Dream art installation as part of Zagreb Admin Festival. 
So somewhere here in the downtown area, there was this entrepreneur guy uh, in late 19th century who had an idea of building a funicular to the upper town. Mm -hmm. He saw that a lot of people are struggling with stairs going to the upper town and uh, he wanted to see if his idea would be worth a while. So he was sitting somewhere here at the corner for 30 days, for a month, counting how many people is going up and how many is going down yeah. to see if his investment would be worth it. He filed for a license to yeah. build and got it in only two days. He built a funicular. First one was uh, ran on steam engine. After that, Zagreb Electric Tram took over and now it's been run on um, electric motor, right? And it only has one compartment. And this is the steepest and uh, shortest funicular in Europe. From top to bottom, it takes 60 seconds. On a day like this, the funicular can get quite busy, but there is also a stairway on the side that will burn you some of those extra calories. People of Graditz managed to build city walls with four gates and four towers. We only have one gate still standing, but all four towers. Uh, nowadays, uh, the cannon from the top fires a sound shot at noon. every single day, exactly at noon, and how you're going to recognize original Zagreb person. We are going to set up our watches according to shooting oh. of a cannon. <laughs> and this is how you're going to recognize, so people say, original Zagreb person. Yeah. And this used to be called the Bell of Thieves, uh, that rang uh, also in the evening, calling out for people to come back from the fields that were in today's downtown, to come back within city walls because at that time, Middle Ages, you didn't want to be left yeah, outside of the yeah, city walls. Advent on Strasmaio Promenade in the upper town is one of the best events altogether. The old lane is adorned with dazzling Christmas lights and cheerful wooden huts. And best of all, you get views over the city below. And Croatian people in general, we are all about food and drinks. We like to enjoy life and this is where our gatherings are usually made around the table. A lot of hot wine, uh, hot chocolate during Christmas time. What's this thing? So this was uh, the old uh, cable car to Medvednica Mountain, Bear Mountain. Back in a day, now we have the old, uh, new one. Yeah. Uh, but sometime, I don't know, 1980s, 90s. This is how we travel to our mountain to the, the very top. Yeah. Uh, going skiing or the skating or whatever we I, I don't ski I don't like winter <laughs> I just like Christmas I'll during winter and all that yeah, yeah it's but nice. it, it is nice yeah. but you know uh, back in the day we all also had snow and we can feel how the climate is changing even here so Zagreb was very cold in the 50s 70s it was really snowy and you know it wasn't this pleasant to go outside and enjoy yourself I don't know, snow kind of works for me. Imagine how it's even more beautiful it must be here when it snows. So this is the place where the convent of uh, Benedictine nuns used to be in 15th century. In the beginning of 20th century it was already um, looked as upon as a um, ruin. And we have been left with this uh, beautiful meadow on which today a lot of social things are happening from concerts, exhibitions. And now it's like an empty space in the upper town in which you don't have a lot of greenery. And uh, we were, Zagreb was always looking towards west, to, towards Vienna, uh -huh. how we developed, uh, wanted to copy 
a lot of things that they have been doing. Uh, and since we were under influence of Habsburg monarchy wow. for centuries, this is what we had. So in the uh, 1950s, we started to build new Zagreb again with renowned architects who were planning these um, areas of new Zagreb as a like really well-made grid of streets. Mm -hmm. And also in new Zagreb, protecting people that were living in those areas mm -hmm. from being breached by, you know, random cars. So they built this new Zagreb in order to have only people who are living there going into those streets. This cast a whole new light on the city. I'm, I'm really, I had no idea, I was here before, right? But I had no idea about these facts you're telling me about. This is what this local guides are for. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, so. Okay. <laughs>